of steam. So one of the great things uh, about having Mikami and Suda in it is they do a really good job with their bosses. Their bosses have as much personality as their heroes do. So you get you get hints about the bosses, why they're in, in hell. Check that out. Check that out. I want to do it like So again, negative consequence of the darkness, normal corpses end up spawning more demons. Look like you drag me, crisis, portal. That's not mine, so does it, uh, is where you shoot them important, like, uh, say, dead space? Yeah, you, uh, you can definitely, I mean, headshots will do instant kills, but you can shoot off limbs as well. Uh, you'll notice there's some tequila here. And alcohol, uh, in hell, alcohol, like sake, tequila, and absence, will actually restore your health. So Garcia will have to chug bottles uh, many times to stay alive. And there's actually the restorative powers of alcohol. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's the opposite. In hell, it's good for you. Yeah. So here's a whole darkness corridor. There's no goat heads. It's just all torment. So basically, when you're in these sections, you don't have God mode on. You are tense, and you're looking to get the hell out of there as quickly as possible. So where did uh, Suda and Mikami draw some of their inspiration for from this game? Their twisted minds. I mean, <laughs> you know, what, what makes an artist see what an artist sees? It's, I wish I had that. So <laughs> I did hear Suda was an undertaker, though, at one point. So <laughs> that might have had something. And here we got Justine. Lovely voice. Less lovely backstory when you find out about her. That some great storybooks that tell uh, about the bosses and Johnson and Garcia read them together and uh, all the bosses have really cool backstories. Yeah, so what sort of um, enemies and bosses will characters face, or will players face as they travel throughout this twisted world? Well, you'll see like each each primary chapter will have a main boss that'll make an appearance. Uh, Justine's actually a little bit later, so she's really just kind of showing earlier. Um, you'll see a lot of the demons, the different types of demons. Um, we saw the. We saw the basic boogeyman demons. We got this guy right here. He's got a huge uh, blade saw. So that's not going to be too fun to have. Nope. <laughs> So he's covered in darkness. I'm not going to melee his darkness off. I'll do that from afar. I see that weak spot on the back, so I'm going to stun him with my light gun. This is something like, as you can play through the game, you'll be able to power up the light gun, so I'll be able to stun him for longer. I'll use the uh, Monocutioner here. There we go. Uh, what other weapons are you going to have other than the light gun and this? So you'll have the light gun, you'll have the torch, uh, you'll have the different versions. So the boner is the primary pistol, the Skullcutioner is like your shotgun, and uh, the teether is your machine gun. And ammo is plentiful so out, so there's lots of incentive to use each gun. You don't really have to conserve. You can really go nuts on the bad guys. Uh, there's lots of close-up execution melee kills. Uh, various things like shooting the barrels. And then bosses will have to be defeated in their own way as well. Would you say the game's mostly a uh, linear experience, or is there some more open-ended exploration? It's more linear, like Suda and Mikami definitely had a story they wanted to tell, so they do guide you along uh, to, to keep on seeing like what's next. But you will find yourself having to explore a little bit, finding keys. Uh, to solve. Oh, there's George. He's got a harmonica stuck in his throat, so he's you know he's a boss we're gonna have to deal with too. So, uh, what? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> this little blood sewer guy's popping up. 
Yeah, so uh, why did you guys opt to use the Unreal Engine for this game? Uh, what What's it bring to the table? Um, it, was, it was probably the developer's choice. I mean, they probably wanted to, fo they wanted to focus more on their vision and probably not building their own code, and that's one of the nice things about having a strong engine like Unreal readily available. It's going to shoot so that way. Let me see if I can take out his, uh, okay, so I took out his legs there. So he's still crawling after me. <laughs> I'm just stop him to death like that. With uh, such a creative team of guys, are, are you uh, envisioning this as a franchise? Is, is this going to be a universe we're going to revisit, or is it a little too early to tell? It, it's hard to say. I mean, you know, it all depends, of course, how well things do and if the, you know people like it. Um, each, each one of Suda's games have been so unique and different, and then you see things like No More Heroes, you know, that was able to catch on. They had a nice sequel, so it, it's always the hope, but it's also it's clear that the uh, they've got a great they do a great job doing one-offs and doing entire new worlds each time too. So you know, to be determined. Those are demon cube gates. We've seen these before in the game. That's covered, that's a switch covered by darkness. I need to be able to uh, shoot that switch in order to advance past the gate. So there was like a demon with some more horns. So you see different tiers, different layers of demons too. So what's the deal with those vector graphics that that's pop in just, and out? That's part of the suit of style. That's how uh, when you switch between your, your guns, you, you, know, you just kind of see how it gets fit, fit, see how it gets put together. So here we got a uh, baby gate. <laughs> The babies are baby demons in hell, so they need to guard gates until they grow up a little bit. And there that hand is barfing out darkness. Lovely. So <laughs> this is good, and, well, so you can just kind of see it slowly coming towards me. Now I've got another bad guy with the take care of. I just shot him back into the darkness, and now he's invulnerable again. So I kind of I need to use this darkness so I can get to that switch. You see, there's like a red cord, an umbilical cord that connects the demon cube gate to the switch. So I do need to use it a little bit. But at the same time, when I'm playing, I don't have God mode on. I'm freaking out because it's a stressful situation watching your life drop and invincible enemies coming at you. All right, so I bust through that, avoid that guy. And finally, there's a goat head. You can, and there's less ambient noise around, you can hear the goat heads, so you kind of like, okay, I'm around the corner, where is it? Let's get this darkness out of here. So here I got my brain. So I'll be able to feed that to the, uh, the baby head. It's cluing me in where the next clue is, the eye. So how much of a focus is there on uh, melee combat? Would you say it's mostly a shooter experience? It's generally shooter, but it also depends on how you want to play it. So the first time I played it, um, I was powering up my charge attack, so I could, so here I'd have to charge it up and then hit the enemies. That's like a one-hit kill. Um, and I pumped up my red gems in that right away, so I was just like baseball batting through enemies. So it's, it's kind of, it's up to what you want to power up. Yeah, and you can see with the style and the dialogue, it's it's really like a, uh, a grindhouse, like Evil Dead meets Desperado. It's you know, it's not taking itself too seriously. You've got this gory vision of hell, but it's not necessarily scary. It's more psychologically scary. Although it's certainly stuff that could be uh, can give you nightmares. Yeah. So but you wouldn't you wouldn't classify it as a uh, horror game. It's just like a psychological thriller, it's, sort of. It's, it's you'll see in this next cutscene uh, where we see Paula. Fleming's definitely doing some psychological uh, stuff to Garcia. He's messing with his mind with his girlfriend. Um, but it, it's not all about like scares. It's about what the hell? Why is there so much blood and gore everywhere? This creepy sense of dread. Why are there baby mouths that I'm feeding keys to? Why am I walking around a big meat factories are going to be here so it's it's just suited taking the normal world and putting that twisted underworld spin.
spin on it. And that really, uh, that's what makes it creepy and psychologically. You never know what's coming next. Exactly. So here's my alcohol vending machine. <laughs> So Gotta load up on the apps in there. So, uh, what are some of your favorite levels or environments in the game? Uh, I do like this one that we're showing right now with the, uh, the butcher uh, factory. Uh, I can't reveal all the levels, because there's, but there's more coming. But and uh, about how far through the game is this? This is this is the second level. So right now, yeah, he's following Paula around. She's walking around in a corset, and uh, Fleming's just basically playing some pretty nasty tricks on Garcia. So tell me a bit about Fleming. He's in control of this universe. Yes, he is the undeniable Lord of the Dead. Uh, completely evil dude. It has like six eyes on top of his head. <laughs> when you see him, you know he's a bad guy. And he makes his entrance in the beginning of the game, abducting Paul in quite a crude way. So right away you hate the guy and you want to take it to him. So who's the target audience for this game? Uh, what kind of uh, gamers are you trying to appeal to? Well, definitely mature gamers. Uh, Clearly. Maybe an M-rated game. It does definitely help. I mean, we're looking for gamers yeah. that love an intense experience. Uh, you know, definitely suit a fan from before are going to love this game. People who have had that horror background in Resident Evil or uh, Silent Hill, they're going to feel this. But, uh, third person shooter fans will like it. But it's also, it's got that nice cult following too. Like, not everyone's going to get it and we're fine with that because the audiences it's going to speak to are just going to freaking love it. So, that's, I mean, that's what soon is great at. Yeah, it definitely looks like one of those games that'll attract that cult following. Yeah. Super dedicated. Well, uh, thank you so much, man. Yeah, no Appreciate it. Thank you.